this was something, you know, immediately after Daegu, this is what we thought about, and it was how, how soon can we be ready, and can we be ready. It was a long fall, long winter, kind of up and down in spring, um, all leading up to this, and, and the elbow held up, and it, I got pretty emotional. Uh, more so than the, than the first time making a team, and this was this was definitely more work, and uh, had to have a lot more faith, a lot more patience. But I could, couldn't be any, any more excited than, than I am right now. All right, Ashton, what does it feel like to have the world record? I feel like it's. I think. Something like this is a representation of a lot of, I don't think work is a, an appropriate word, but it'll probably suffice for now. A lot of work that I've put in and that friends, family, and support staff have put in in general. And it's, it's not so much just numbers, it's like all the little stuff that you guys don't get to see that... Uh, just kind of makes this thing possible, and <laughs> there's there's really very few words to say to describe it. So, unfortunately, I'm brief in that in that respect. All right. Well, now open it up for questions. Ashton, when you crossed the finish line and you looked up, saw the scoreboard, and you started to break down, what was going through your mind when you looked at it? I think to be considered, to have that score or to just do whatever I did, it's it's like it's like I've, I've worked so hard to to do that, but in it's like I, it's like almost like I didn't want to do it for some reason. It's just it, for it to happen was one of it's, it, just emotions come out. It's so hard to explain. <clears throat> like, I really, I really, really, truly love this event. Not because of I just like running and jumping and doing all that stuff. Just because of what it is and what it symbolizes for me, and just what the the Cathlon community, just the track and field world, is all about. And maybe it's not even about that much to the rest of the world, but to me, it's my whole world. So to do the best that I possibly could in my world makes me pretty happy. Ashton, in the 15, I think with 400 left, you're about two seconds off pace. Can you talk about what was going through your mind that last lap? With 600 meters to go, I became a firm believer, not that there was much doubt before, but a firm believer that the Hayward magic does exist because I felt it for 600 meters big time. And especially with the 400 to go, I knew I was two seconds off. And I just, I knew that there was no way I was not going to get the world record. And in large part because of just the atmosphere around the stadium. So there really wasn't much going through my mind except this is happening. This is happening right now. Ashton, Captain from Outer Space, congrats, sir. It's okay. Um, was there any talk among the other competitors before the 1500 of how to get you through, maybe including Curtis Beach, maybe some camaraderie and, and, and rabbiting you to that pace? Yeah, no. There wasn't, I mean, Curtis was very kind and he offered, he's like, Do you, I can help you if you want. And I was like, Curtis, you go run your own race, it's, it's really okay. Um, of course, there's always, you know, talk of pacing and all this stuff within the decathlon, but for some reason at this time, we just had our own little deal under the shed over there. There's very much a lot of decathlon love going on. And just kind of, I wouldn't have rather been anywhere else in the world at that time. And there was no help with the pacing, really, except I do think that Joe, with 200 meters to go or 220 to go, he was kind of like, come on, Ashton, come catch me. I just, I read that in his, you know, in the way he was running. He's like, Joe takes off, you know, he's a, he's a fast guy. And so, uh, it just, there's so much support just from, from these guys, like, it's, it's ridiculous. I just, I feel very fortunate to be in this position. Um, I don't want to be, like, <clears throat> treated super special or anything like that, because I think it's just, in large part, because the guys are competing with next to you. <clears throat> Thank you.
Hey, Ashton. Uh, can you talk about just the last six years um, from when you were a senior in high school and your development uh, in the decathlon? From the time I started the decathlon, the very first one I ever did, I loved the event. I didn't really know why. I still don't know why. Um, and I, it's, it's hard for me to speak of my own development because, you know, I'm the one... It, I'm the one behind the steering wheel, really, and it's kind of, I think it's easier to see what the vehicle is doing if you're looking at it. So, for me, I feel as if I've been doing the same thing all along, and because of the preparations that my coach has helped me with, and, you know, just in general, the same feeling for me just happens to be at a different level on the outside, you know what I mean? So I feel the same as... I do right now, like running 100 in long jump, it felt the same effort, same whatever, as it did when I was six years old. It's just going faster and farther. Ashton, you've gotten three world records on the heptathlon, <laughs> um, but this is the big one. Yeah. Can you contrast those feelings, you know, say, heptathlon world record holder, and now you've got the big one? The heptathlon world record is, it's nice, but the, the decathlon is the event, and it, it, I think the heptathlon is more like a, what do you call it, like a preparation event, or just like a practice decathlon, I don't know, it's, it's, it, there's something completely different about the decathlon, getting up the second day, you knowing you have the five events, just being out there that long with the guys. More of a mental struggle. Yeah. The yeah. 400 meter. Yeah. yeah. Feel free to pop it. If anybody has anything to do with it. Yeah, that. seriously. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just a testament to the events. Like, we have the young and the old. <laughs> <laughs> the veterans. It's not, it's not that old. But there's, there's a lot of wisdom that can be had. Ashton. Ashton, let us know about the conversation you had with your coach on the track immediately following the 1500. <laughs> immediately following. There, there was no conversation. There was just mutual laughter, emotions, <laughs> words. Now, I'll tell you what, the best part, the best part to me, actually I'd have to think about it more, but a really good part to me was before the javelin, so after the pole ball, I go underneath, and Harry, Harry Maris, my coach, is sitting back there. He looks at me and he's kind of telling me, you just got to do this in the jab, Ash, and you'll be fine, and all this other stuff. And I look at him and I go, all right, what do I have to throw, and then what do I have to run to get the American record? And he stopped me, looked at me, and he goes, Ashton, the world record. And at that moment, you know, I saw his belief in me, and I was like, let's go do it then. Could it have come in any better place than Eugene? That's a rhetorical question, John. <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, how the decathlon differs from the heptathlon, and one of the obvious things you didn't mention is the weather. Um, yeah. Could Trey and Ashton both comment on these weather conditions that we had this weekend? Uh, I feel like it's the 11th event, and it's just something else you have to fight through, you know? Yeah, it, it's just part of the event. It, it is what it is. Everybody's out there dealing with it. Um, that was definitely the wettest decathlon I've ever done in, in my life. And I, I hope that when when Ashton's record is, is put in the books and when it's all written about and stuff, that there are parentheses and asterisks and everything you can put behind it to say how crummy the conditions were <laughs> and how impressive the mark really was that, that he did. And... Uh, you know, the weather is just something that every decathlete thinks about, but acts like it doesn't bother them. And uh, it just is what it is. What's your two cents, Greg? Uh, just like you said, man, um, it's just a card that we're all dealt. Um, something that we all have to deal with together. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to get through all this in the rain, especially, you know, just being cold all the time. Um, and everybody has to deal with it. It's something that we all have to deal with. And... Ashton dealt with it well, the world record. 
a lot of these questions could be answered if you guys would do a decathlon. <laughs> <laughs> try it sometime. Ashton, right here, uh, you, you, you've talked about your love for the decathlon, and uh, given that, what did it mean to you uh, right after the, you finished to meet the um, yeah. group of American uh, uh, gold medal uh, medalists on the track? That was a really big deal because those guys represent an entire lifespan of the sport and they've kind of been there, done that, and it's uh, it's just, you know, to be even considered in the same event is a big honor and uh, I, th I think the reason the decathlon is so appealing when you try it and you do it is because it's like living an entire lifetime in two days. You have the ups and the downs, you know, the goods, the bads, the, the comebacks, you know, things like that. And it all, it all happens in two days. And everybody loves life. And I think that's why we love the cat house. It seems like it's just like it. Even though I'm only 24. <laughs> what do I know? Ashton, over here, um, you mentioned you're a firm believer now in the, the Hayward magic. Can you go into more detail about what that is? It's it's a feeling that you get when even if you're off pace, on pace, tired, I was so tired before the 15, I just felt like sleeping and I was like, is my hamstring grabbing? Is it, it going to crack up? It's, and it's something that takes that and as soon as the gun is fired, just kind of makes it all go away. It, I think it just lets you do what you were, you know, made to do, or what you, I don't know, it just, it doesn't put any limitations in front of you, it doesn't like, make you think about anything that's wrong, it's just pure you running the events. Is it, is it, right here, right here in the middle. Hi. Hi. Uh, I was wondering, uh, when you are a kid, how do you decide or realize that you can be good in 10 different specialties? And you, and you decide to become a techno, which is not a very, you know, it's a popular discipline and not as popular. And who was your role model when you? This is up? this is something we all can answer. For me personally, it was other people being able that other people that saw me, not me, you know, choosing the events. They they said, you know, you. They had a dream that maybe this is something that could happen, and uh, I think. From the first time I tried it, I just loved it. I mean, the decathlon always chooses you. You never choose it. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely something that you... For me, I had to... you got to be convinced to do it. And uh, convinced to to train for it. And uh, once you do one, that's it. It just, it just takes one. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, I started this when I was 10 years old, and um, at the USATF program, we do the little kids triathlon, you know, shot put, high jump 400 meter, and that's the extent to your multi-event. Uh, ever since then, I just loved it. And um, at the national meet that year, in my first year, but I placed ninth in the top eight, get medals, and I promised myself that I'd never let that happen to me again. So after that, that was just my motivation, and it's something I just kind of grabbed onto. And um, like you said, it, it definitely chooses you. Um, and you just know once you do it, just you like the grind, you like the work every day just to know that you're going somewhere. I think this, another interesting thing is, uh, personally, I don't know if it's the same for these guys or any other decathletes, but I was always attracted to the athleticism. I didn't, all, I didn't want to just run, I didn't want to just jump, whatever I did athletically. I wanted to be just, I wanted to do different things, like trying to maximize my athleticism as much as I could, not just you know, maximize my running or my jumping. Trey. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. As, as one of Ashton's competitors, could you talk a little bit about what his performance today means and how it uh, changes the outlook for the Olympics? Shoot, I don't think it changed anything for the Olympics. Uh, I think this was it, was, it was, it was his before we started yesterday, and it was, it's still his now, and so, I, you know, I know for Ashton it probably hasn't sunk in, and I don't think it's sunk in really for me. This is going to be something down the road that I'm going to get to tell my friends and my kids and nephews and everybody that, you know, see that, that record there, I, w I was there. I got to see it. 
got to talk to him. I got a picture to prove it. <laughs> uh, you know, and I get to get to tell him about about the experience. Yeah. And, um, you get to you get to tell him. It took a world record for him to beat me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I only, I got, so well, yeah. Up until London, I can say I've only lost to Ashton one time, and he had to break the world record. And <laughs> um, you had to have a gift over. Yeah, but it. <clears throat> It's some, that's what you guys do. You can put all this into words. You guys saw it all. And it's tough for for us going through it. To, I I think I did an interview yesterday where I, I fully I told I think I might have told Dano I guess I fully expect him to break the American record or, or the world record tomorrow. And he asked if I was shocked by anything I saw. I was like, nope. And it, it's just one of those things. It was just an awesome, awesome experience to be out there. Um, Getting wet and uh, getting soaked uh, out here in this Eugene, uh, Eugene atmosphere. And, um, yeah, it's something I'm, I'm never going to forget. Hi, Ashton. Uh, Becky from the Oregon Daily World. Uh, just wanted to ask what it meant to you to kind of achieve this incredible goal at Hayward Field where you've done so much already. I think for my decathlon career, maybe just my athletic career, and it, you know, Hayward Field is kind of where it all started for me. I grew up in Bend, and I decided to go to Oregon, and I was talking with the coaches right here at Hayward Field. It was a perfectly sunny day in the spring, which was super lucky <laughs> for them. And, uh, yeah, I just thought, you know what, this is a nice place, I like this. And I ended up coming here as an Oregon kid, competed. And the, the support and the crowd love me. I love them. I love this field. And uh, it just it means a lot because it's not like I'm finished, but it's it's just you know special for it to happen here. It's a very special place. <clears throat> Trey, let's talk about Trey for a second. <laughs> Evaluate your own performance for us uh, on the day, and, and specifically talk to you that moment in the javelin where you launched a great one, you were super stoked, and then there was some miscommunication, somebody called it foul, and you ran up to the line and they gave it back to you. Yeah, the, overall, this was something that up until, you know, like, two months ago, we didn't know if we would be ready to do, and um, we got here, we had B-plus performance yesterday and got through it and gave, we were in really good position and the only question mark remaining was uh, was the javelin and my elbow f has kind of felt the same for the last month or so and um, got underneath and was warming up and I basically I stood in the back of the runway and said, you know what, I don't want to have to do this twice. I got had awesome trainers, got a great tape job and I had my, my brace on, I had every all full confidence in my abilities and we had a magic number out there that we wanted to hit to secure the, the spot that was just over 50 meters and that was it, just clo close your eyes, hope it, hope it holds up, hope the work that I've, that I've done over the past eight and a half months has is, is not been for naught and um, it held up, it went a lot farther than we thought and uh, I was just super excited, I knew I didn't foul. And I turned around, was looking for my coach, and I was really excited, and somebody just said, hey, hey, they threw up a red flag, and then I ran over and was, asked the officials, I was like, I'm going to, what's going on, I'm going to protest whatever's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the, the man with the, with the clipboard, the man who has the final word, just looked at me and was like, no, it was good. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> And was pretty upset with the, the <laughs> surveyors or something like that. And that was it. That was it. At that point, I it was I was kind of excited. I was I was going to London. My elbow was still in one piece, and uh, kind of kind of checked out after that. <laughs> yeah. After the, after the uh, javelin, in the middle. After the javelin, and you knew what time you needed to for the record. What, what, would you think your, what did you think your chances were of running that fast, and was there any doubt in your mind that you were going to go for it? Yeah. I mean, always doubt. I don't think it would be very human if you didn't have doubt, at least a little bit. But going through my mind, maybe there was so much that there was nothing, because I don't remember much. 
I knew that this was a possibility, and it always comes down to something like this, doesn't it? It's like, the goal coming in, make the team. No stress, no big deal, it's all going to be good, just make the team. Oh, by the way, there you have a world record change, you got a PR by two seconds. It's like, oh, jeez. I mean, you've got to take the opportunity, of course, but every time, the multi, it just always comes down to that 15, no matter what you do. But uh, going through my mind, it was... I think I had the help of the Ducatis to kind of distract me. They're all support, a lot of high fives, a lot of, come on, man, you can do it, you can do it. You got this, I know you got it. And uh, of course I was nervous, but I wasn't shaking. I just kind of felt, you know, in the moment for once, which is nice. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't necessarily doubt myself. Um, it just, I knew that there's, there may not be another opportunity, so I'm going to make this one count. All right, well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and congratulations.